as a backpack hunter, I've realized that organization is a huge in the backcountry. We're always trying to cut weight. We're always trying, you know, the lightest gear and but at the same time we don't want to sacrifice quality. Well, I've got the uh I've got the solution. Actually, I don't. Uh my buddy Tristan Talvey has the solution with uh, with the gear that he's come out with, uh, with 6 a.m. And it, it doesn't look like 6 a.m. when you see the logo, but it's actually in Roman numerals. It's uh, VI, which is Roman numeral for 6 a.m. And he's come out with these G3 bags, and he's got a bunch of other really good gear, which in this uh, hunt that we went on together, got to test out like actually field test all this stuff and it was outstanding so uh this podcast is right after our hunt and i hope you guys enjoy but first uh outside of 6 a.m i want to talk about switching camo switching camo uh we are a veterans organization i'm on the board of directors um our entire goal is to help veterans get into the outdoors so if you could support us on instagram facebook uh switching underscore camo and instagram and uh switching camo on facebook and uh you know buy a hat buy a a hoodie or you know what whatever we've got for sale um just help support get a veteran out and or a active duty member out uh, into the outdoors on a fishing trip, hunting trip, um, hiking, or camping trip. Um, it'll do a lot of good. Also, uh, Mystery Ranch packs. Um, I've been using Mystery Ranch for quite a while now, and they are outstanding packs. I, I see a lot of people that uh, just use like a regular backpack, um, which it'll get the job done but i promise you if you ever actually end up getting something you're going to tear that bag apart and i can tell you this from personal experience so invest in a good bag go to mysteryranch.com and check it out uh or actually on my website i believe i have an affiliates link and um you can you can look through there uh, another company that I really like is Cutco Cutlery. Uh, I field tested, uh, well, I've used Cutco since I was 12 years old. And I know you don't, uh, you probably won't believe this, but I have their double D edge, uh, double D edge clip point knife um, that I've had since I was 12 years old. Never sent it back to get sharpened. And I can't tell you how many animals I have processed with that. And um, because I actually wanted to count the number of animals and and stuff like that that I was processing, Cutco sent me uh, a brand new knife, a clip point double D edge knife, and I processed 25 animals with it before somebody decided they liked it more than I did. Um, Somebody actually ran off with it this season. Thankfully, it was at, you know, towards the end of the season, and, uh, I mean, we still got shoulder season, which I still have my knife from when I was 12, and uh, so I'll end up using it, but 25 animals without it being sharpened in it was still razor sharp, and so that is a testament to the quality that, that Cutco has. Uh, they also have uh, kitchen knives, which are outstanding. I use Cutco kitchen knives. Um and man, they are outstanding. My entire family is a believer in Cutco. And Tioga Rise Coffee. So Tioga Rise, I've actually got a box right here. Um, and I drink this stuff even when I'm not out in the field. But it is an outstanding instant coffee. Um, and I I'm not an instant coffee fan normally, but Tioga Rides has made me a believer in instant coffee. Uh, it's nice and quick. You don't have to wait for it to drip and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, 
not that those drift co drip coffees are bad, but uh, hey, you know, I I like being efficient, especially in the back country. So these Tioga Rise packets are outstanding. They will mix hot or cold. If you don't like your coffee hot, um, you're not on American. It's just they've Tioga Rise has got the solution for you. So give them a a look uh, at TiogaRise.com. Now on with the show. What do you think, man? Sitting in the little mini chair and yeah, it's good. It reminds me of bringing back to elementary school. Yeah, we're uh, we're reporting we're recording this podcast in uh, my old library uh, in towns in Montana. Couldn't really find anywhere else to do it, so uh, we were gonna try and do it at a coffee shop, which is pretty bizarre that there's a coffee shop in the town that I grew up in because. Um, yeah, none of that was there. Everybody needs coffee. Uh, it seems to be a lifeblood now, right? And it had donuts, too. Yeah, they did have donuts. Pretty good donuts, I thought. So um, we went on this hunt uh, just by, like, happenstance, really. Yeah. Um, I had bought some of your gear. And, well, Billy had, from Switching Camel had said, hey, you need to check out these bags, these G3 bags, and... I was like, well, I like organization, and I had been using uh, Walmart, you know, the Walmart roll-down bags or whatever, which is kind of pain in the butt, you know. Yeah. You have, every time you want to use it, you have to roll it down and stuff like that. And or people use Ziploc bags too, so. Yeah, yeah, well, okay, so I, I use Ziploc bags <laughs> for my toilet paper, right? and uh, I stuffed it inside of your... Uh, one of your G3 bags and <clears throat> I, we l both left all of our gear out in the rain yeah just, last night was the first night we we just hopped into bed and for totally forgot about our stuff outside not together we didn't hop into bed together yeah it, right. was, it wasn't that kind of party <laughs> but uh right. but yeah I mean we were just racked out and uh, didn't realize it was going to rain and it rained pretty good and both of our bags are out I had left some of my G3 bags out. I left my food bag out with the uh, with my instant coffee and uh, left it wide open and got water all inside the bag and everything. And could have drank out of it. Yeah, I probably could have. But the uh, the G3 bag that was uh, completely drenched on the outside and on the inside, everything was dry. My med kit, my uh, toilet paper, all that kind of stuff. Everything was dry. So that was pretty cool. Yeah. I thought that was pretty, yeah, I'm a believer. Nice. Yeah. So, uh, I guess we should introduce you, huh? Sure. Yeah. My name's, uh, Tristan Talvey. I'm the owner of 6am outdoors. A lot of people call it Viam, but the VI is Roman numerals for six. Yeah. That's what I thought. Yeah. <laughs> and was, we, like, and we came, we came up with that just because we're not solely geared towards hunters or fishermen. We're just out, uh, geared towards outdoor enthusiasts and whether if you're hiking hunting fishing biking you're usually on the trail doing something by 6 a.m so that's what we came up with yeah so we manufacture lightweight outdoor gear so like i said not hunting or fishing gear just outdoor gear yeah and it's uh so far from what i've seen i've gotten kind of a crash course yeah yeah it was uh it wasn't as bad as you know what i anticipated like i brought all my gear and stuff but we brought a new shelter out and uh we haven't introduced it yet uh the things it has about 91 ish square foot and uh it, it's a it's a nice shelter because one pound 10 ounces it's perfect i mean you can get four guys in there but you're not gonna have your gear um but it, it's more or less a two man's palace with your two guys gear it's stove compatible so we haven't introduced it yet i had a bunch of people 
kicking me around saying make this make that and i said no 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 but then one of my but one of my previous customers says you're making me this you say you do custom projects so you're going to be making me one and so i made him one and it trickled down and trickled down and i said okay well i'll make one for myself for this season and that's what i brought with us and we set it up a couple times now granted we didn't set it up like as it should um we just put four ten stakes in it and you know the poles and we called it good um if we were set in a single area for multiple days then uh, I think we would have set it up perfect. Yeah, I was I was really thinking about that this morning too when when it was raining. Right. And you know we didn't have the guidelines up and all that kind of stuff. Right. And I'm like, yep. Yeah. Just to let everybody know too, it's all single wall stuff. Um, so we use a sil poly, and sil poly doesn't stretch. Uh, so if it gets wet, um, it's not going to stretch like a sil nylon. That's still waterproof, but like I said, we didn't set it up as if it should. So when you're inside, we were getting rained on, um, essentially because of all the mist. But all that condensation was built up in there, and it was just dumping on us. Yeah, well, we didn't vent it either. Right. Which you probably should to help airflow and yep. keep out that condensation and oh, stuff. Absolutely. So. Like I said, yeah, we just conked out and <laughs> went to bed and totally spaced on it. Like, I mean, I woke up, and I was... I don't even know what time it was. You know, it was just dumping. I was like, oh, man, my backpack's outside. But that was, yeah. luckily, that was the only thing that we had. Or I had that was outside, and the essentials weren't soaking wet. And I want to go back just a second because there is enough room for the gear in this tent. Yeah, absolutely, there is. Yeah. We just neglected to put it in there. Well, yeah, we got to that spot, and we just said, all right, well, we're going to, um, you know, set stuff up and – what I wanted to do was boil my water first, you know, for dinner. That's what we did. And the next thing you know, it, you know, the food's cooking. We just set stuff up. And next thing you know, it, it was like, all right, throw your stuff in there, you know, in the shelter and started eating. The next thing you know, it, we're out, you know, and like literally we went outside and the, the stove was still all set up and the backpacks were sprawled out and your G3s were wide open. Yeah. You could have had coffee in a G3. <laughs> Yeah, that's, I probably could have. That would have been a first, I think. Yeah, that, that is true. So, yeah, the, the G3s came about is um, if you could imagine one sheet of paper and you fold it and it has a seam down the center for where your zipper goes. Uh, everybody wants to have organized, or the lightest pack and they lose all your organization. And then there are other companies out there that have organization pouches, but we make them with one sheet. The fabric, so it only makes two seams, one on each end. While other people, other companies, they, you know, trace around the whole thing. So you well, got well, all four one sides. One seam with the zipper in the center. Absolutely. Yep. So we that's just one thing we did different. We're not reinventing the wheel. We're just adding more spokes to make it a better product. You know, like I said, other companies use four, has, have four seams all the way around. We got two. And then obviously not including the zipper. But uh, it's all waterproof fabric. Um, you don't have to seam seal anything unless you want, you know, to seam seal the two seams on the ends. But uh, like I told you this morning, just throw them upside down and you're totally good. Yeah. If they, if you leave them out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't recommend that, by the way. Um, yeah. Don't, don't leave your gear out in the rain. Yeah. And we don't, we don't, I mean, we could put waterproof zippers on there, but even waterproof zippers aren't waterproof. They're more or less water resistant. But then it just drives the cost up. Like those sets alone, you know, I think they're 56 bucks. Um, and we do military discounts, you know, just like yourself. We do military discounts, uh, LEO. It's not just specific military, but providers, service providers. Um, but, yeah, so that's just one of the products that we do. Um, a lot of people buy them. Game bags are huge. Like even right now, you know, I got two weeks off of my full-time job. And for probably like last month, I've been sold out of game bags. Everybody's like... When you get more in, when you get more in, I was like, well, when I'm back from the woods, I can work on it. But I put a big old notification out there on the website saying, hey, get your orders in by this time because I'll be gone. Yeah. Well, I'm, at some point, I'm definitely going to get your game bags. I, after this week, I'm I'm pretty much a believer in your gear because nice. we, yeah, we use it for sure. Yeah. And the organization aspect of it. Yeah, you can get a lighter pack, but being able to find all your stuff when you need it and, um, was great. 
Well, especially like how many times do we climb up a mountain and you stuff your stuff in your pack and you need something, you pull it out and you boom, you know right where it's at. Yeah. You know, you don't have to do a gear drop. You know, a lot of people, especially with packs nowadays, you know, they don't have organization. They just throw stuff in there. Well, and that's that was something I was going to say too. Like, you know, you look at a lot of the really good backpacking packs or load carrying packs and stuff like that. They don't have all the pockets. You might right. have a pocket here and there and stuff, but for the most part, you don't have all the pockets. So, right. you know, that's where your organization, you completely lose your organization. Right. Well, I've got, you know, you and I both ran the Metcalf and, you know, it's got a nice lid on it. And then you got a one pocket on the side for your water bottle, the other one with the zippered pocket. Those are the pockets you got, mm-hmm. you know, and it's, it's just like a, a big dump bin. So it's like if you wanted your toilet paper, where are you going to put it? You know, you're not going to put it on the outside because what if you put your pack down and it's going to start raining? You know, obviously that pack will start to leak over or, you know, absorb water. So, yeah, just keep it inside with those bags and, like I said, waterproof fabric, uh, and you're going to be set. Yeah, well, and not to mention, you know, you just brought up the waterproof fabric. So, my, like I said, I'd, I'd left some of those G3 bags inside my Metcalf with, with the zipper undone down the side. Um, and, you know, nothing in those bags was wet. So if you take that concept and you actually transfer it, you know, let's say you're in, you know, the back country and stuff and you get dumped on while you're walking to where you were planning on camping, you know, your, your clothes maybe uh, in there if you've got an extra set of clothes or extra socks. Um going to be probably dry yeah and we got we sell them singles you know we sell them uh, four pack and five pack and a lot of people buy a four pack because they don't know what to do with that larger one i mean the extra large one's pretty big it's like 13 inches by 15 and 16 inches and i use it personally use it for either food or i use it for clothes yeah um you know because granted you don't need your toiletry items and you know that larger one but if you're, you know, just to give everybody a reference of how big that larger one is, is you can get probably six to seven mountain house meals in them. Um, if you dehydrate your own food, you can probably get close to 10 to 12 of them, you know, just because they're much smaller than a mountain house. Mm-hmm. Um, or if you got clothes, you know, you can get probably two days worth of clothes in there, you know, two extra sets. Yeah. Well, and that depends on season too. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, like for what we're wearing here, you know, we were using pretty much using early season stuff. So yeah, you can throw extra pair, you know, two pairs of socks, some underwear and an extra pair of pants and, you know, a shirt and you'll be have plenty of room in there. Yeah. My big thing was I didn't have enough of the bag. I, I really would like to get another one of the, the bigger ones for my clothes because, you know, I'll do extended day trips and stuff and I, I did find that that bigger one worked great for food. Right. Um, but, you know, sometimes I like to have an extra set of clothes and stuff, and I'd like to be able to keep that in that bag. So, yeah, yeah I'm definitely going to get another one of those, too. Yeah, a lot of people use regular roll-top dry bags. You know, that's a very good option as well. Um, those things are heavy, though. Yeah. Um, only difference is between that and ours is, you know, those are obviously 100% waterproof because they're seam sealed. Now, you could make ours the same um, you know, if you want to seam seal them. But that's just not the route we're going. Obviously, we don't have a seam sealer machine to do that. Um, or Like I said, well, the waterproof zippers. But I like the storage pouches over the uh, the dry sacks just because they're easier. You know, you don't always have to squish out of the air and roll them up. And the next thing you know, it, they're the size of like a grapefruit in your pack, you know, because right. they're round. And it's all awkward and everything yeah. in your pack. And then packing stuff in there makes it kind of a pain. And yep. where you could maybe take the Metcalf for, you know, seven or more days. I've actually gone 12 days with the Metcalf before, but, you know, you pack it light, suffer at night. Right. Um, but you you could actually extend your stay and stuff like that or carry, you know, different gear if you were a little better organized. Right, especially those G3s, they lay and you can stack them easier. You know, yeah. you're not packing watermelons or, you know, cantaloupes trying to make a nice pack. Right. Right. Another thing that was pretty cool was your quilt. Yep. Yeah, the quilt's been around, obviously, since we started. I mean, so as some background, you know, I graduated college in 08, and I started making gear for myself from other company shortfalls. And I'm like, oh, I can make this better. You know, so that's kind of how my company started is I picked up a cheapo Walmart machine because I've never sewn before. You know, I was like, I can just make that better. 
And that's kind of like how I am. You know, I always like to tinker and try to make something better. So that's what I did. And then next thing you know, my buddies are all make this, make that. How about you make that for me? Do this. And, you know, so that's kind of like how that trickle down effect was. And then we opened up shop in 2015, you know, as a full, full-time business. So when we started, um, you know, back in 15 is we already, that was one of our initial products. We were pretty much those stuff sacks. We were game bags and quilts. We also had throws and throws are just pretty much a, a quilt without the ability to snap shut. It's a blanket. And uh, they were great for like glassing and stuff like that. But the quilts, they can do that as well because they're convertible. You know, they've got draw cords on the foot box to open it up or close it, you know, make it fully enclosed. Same on your, you know, your, your neck area. You know, you can draw that tight to lock all that heat in. And the quilts are designed to be 25% lighter than a regular mummy bag because you're not, you don't have that insulation on the back side. Because when you have a, a mummy bag, you're laying on that insulation and you're not getting any loft off of it. And that's where you get your insulation value. So as long as you have a high R value pad, like me personally, I have the Thermarest X Therm and it's like a 5.7 R value. There's other ones out there that have just equivalent, but that's just the one that I picked because it's like a pound. Mm-hmm. But uh, if you go, you go with the quilt system, I mean, ours is a, well, the one I use is I'm 6'3", I'm 190 pounds. And I use a long wide and that's a six and a half foot bag. So once you're in the quilt mode is what we call it with the foot box snapped up, goes up to the back of your knees and then uh, the foot box draw uh, all the way tight. You're going to lose close to four to five inches just because it's cinching shut. Your feet are going to stick up obviously out of, you know, into the bag. So you're going to lose some of that height. And that one there in a 10 degree bag weighs two pounds, four ounces. So, and it's synthetic too. So we use climate shield apex. So you can get that thing soaking wet. I know like you and I, this morning, you know, we were uh, inside of that shelter and it was, you know, condensating inside of us. I remember you waking up, your bag wet? I'm like, yeah. Is that, is that coated? Yeah. Yeah. And it was all piled, you know, beaded up on top of it. And literally I could take that quilt. I can get it soaking wet in a river and wring it out and I still have R value. And, you know, with the down one, you don't think about that. You know, once it starts raining, you guys, you guys run for the shelter, you know. Yeah, just to... I didn't, I didn't think about it. it th- today is the, well, this trip was the first trip that I've ever used a down bag. Yeah. Um, mainly because I wanted to test down, you know, I, you, you hear all kinds of different things, but you know, you get 5 million different opinions on, on stuff and it's hard to decipher until you actually see the shortfalls or the, the good things. Yeah. about a product so yeah i think this morning had i not had that uh that water resistant whoopee yeah wrapped around me um over top of the over top of my your down my, bag yeah. my bag i would have been miserable right and that's the only for a manufacturer standpoint that synthetic is so much easier because I mean, if, if we could draw it out, picture a rectangle, I have to sew the perimeter and that's the only stitching that I do. If you were to make it out of a down bag, I'd have to make a checkerboard, yep. you know, because I have to make all the individual pockets and baffling and you got to stuff them. You got to top them off, you know, by sewing them shut. Um, so the manufacturer, that's why it's so expensive. You know, the manufacturing costs are so high. Not, not including the, you know, the cost of material, the down. Um, there are like this, in quote, synthetic down. And a lot of people go to, like what you were saying about what you're going to try. You, you know, mm-hmm. you don't know until you're going to try it. A lot of people say, oh, I got uh, coated down. Well, just like, you know, normal clothes that you have. Oh, well, my jacket's DWR repellent. And it's great that first, you know, couple months. And then you realize you're out there in a downpour and you're wet in 10 minutes. You know, because that, that just breaks down over time. Now, granted a coat, if you want to get some Nick wax or something like that and you recoat it, you know, retreat it, but how are you going to retreat? And this is, you know, I don't have, I mean, other people might know it, but I don't, cause I don't have down. I don't mess with it. It's just not for me, but how are you going to retreat down? That's encapsulated inside of a quilt or a bag. Yeah. You know, you can't just throw it in the wash. I mean, you might get some of it in there, but it's not going to be like from the manufacturer where it's hundred percent coated. So, you know, 
and you'll probably ruin your <laughs> your yeah. washing machine. Yeah. So I mean, I just I just don't de- go down that road. Um, and so the the climate shield that we use, it's made in the U.S. Um, you know, so are we. We're a hundred percent made in the U.S. company. Uh, we have a lifetime warranty on all of our stuff against manufacturer's defects. I've even had a couple people uh, say, "Hey, I threw a game bag or you know a quarter in the game bag and it ripped." I said, well, it's not the fabric that's going to rip because it's a ripstop nylon. I mean, it could tear. But I said, well, what happened? And long story short is they threw a quarter in there that had a bone char or something, and it tore the bag. Now, granted, I took care of that customer just because, you know, I stand behind our product, but it's not the bag that's failing. You know, we just got to make sure that, you know, you, you don't do that because it's a sharp object. Right. You know, but... Just this little things that we try to do is we want to be lightweight, quality, and affordable. And those three things don't jive in the outdoor world when you start talking about products. Mm-hmm. If it's lightweight, you're going to pay a kidney. And, yeah. you know, and if it's going to be quality, you know, all those things, you're paying a kidney. So I just try to make, you know, we don't have high margins. That's why we're not in retailers, you know, because they want too much uh, of the pie. And there's nothing there, you know, for me, you know, almost as it is now. But I want to make a product for an average Joe Hunter like myself. You know, somebody who doesn't need to have top of the line everything with a price tag to go with it. You know, they get great products, uh, lifetime warranty made in the U.S., you know, who's, you know, support their local community, support veterans, everything. You know, so I, that's kind of what I believe in. That's what I wanted to do. That's how we started to make a, the company. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I, so what rating is your game bag supposed to hold up to like Uh, weight wise? Yeah. So we've got five different sizes. Um, the smallest one we just came out with is our boned out set and it's a 12 by 24, which is perfect for your pack frame. You know, most pack frames are 12 inches wide, you know, 24 inches tall. Now, if you, we, we've done testing where I threw a sand in it and it holds over 60 pounds. And there was another company, a third party that did a regular testing on, they threw dumbbells in it. And it had over 120 pounds in it, uh, and the bags didn't fail. They couldn't get them to fail. They just couldn't get any more weight. Well, the only thing that made it fail to an extent was they actually dropped the the yeah the bag, bag wasn't it? Yep. Yeah. Yep. And then uh, and they even said that too in the review. They correct. Were like, this obviously isn't because the bag failed. It was because yeah, you know. And they had all those dumbbells in it, and it dropped, and they were in uh, you know on the ground. And it, in the backyard somewhere. So it might've been a ro- rock or something, but they dropped it up and they, on the ground. They did state that it was the bag uh, that, you know, that when they dropped it, it, it punctured the bag. But even that, that the bag didn't tear with 120 yeah. pounds in it and other companies, their strings would break or, you know, the draw cords would break and all of our game bags have paracord 550 in it. So and other, what's, what's the purpose behind that? Because well, you can, were explaining this to me out there. So. Yeah. Cause you can use paracord, anywhere i mean if you need to take the fibers apart you know you got seven strand you can use it that way it's all reflective reflective cordage too and like perfect example a couple years ago i was on an elk hunt and the week before i was on antelope hunt didn't get anything just grabbed my bag and i went on a hunt i shot an elk and i had animal bags you know our smallest bags and so here i am trying to get elk quarters in these small tiny bags (laughs) you know it just didn't work and i didn't have any paracord on me either you know i was just not prepared and so I, I'm thinking to myself is how am I going to get, you know, this elk quartered up and butchered by myself. And so I robbed the paracord off of, you know, bags and I used it to tie his legs, you know, open so I could start butchering. So, you know, that would be a perfect example or if you need something to lash something together. Or maybe you want to hang a quarter Absolutely. or something like that. Yep. So that's, that's, uh, that smallest bag is, you know, you can get up to, you know, from what they had is 120 pounds in it. Now, honestly, I don't think you're going to be able to get 120 pounds of meat in there. I've only personally had, you know, 60, 70 pounds of meat in them. You know, just because you're going to run out of space for the density yeah. and the size of meat. And so that's our boned out one. Our large bag, you can get about 120 pounds in it. And realistically, we all might think we're big and macho, but most people aren't going to carry out 120 pounds of meat on their pack, you know. Yeah, I've I've made the mistake a couple yeah. of times and you know, just because you're trying to limit trips and right. all that kind of stuff, but I promise you it sucks. Well that's like when we were talking about before, you you picked out a spot and you're like, Yeah, it's straight <laughs> down and I you know, 
the weekend before, I, you know, I put nearly 20 miles in and, you know, I met up with you and we put probably 30 miles in and you're like, well, we can go down there. I'm like, yeah, if we see an elk down there, I'm not going down there. You yeah. Know, just it because was, it was pretty rough. I, just, yeah. Just cause I, like I was telling you, is I want to be a smart hunter. I mean, I'm not somebody who's going to back out, but I just know the limit, my limitations of what I want to do. And the night, you know, just to paint the picture for everybody too, the couple of days prior, you know, we side hill this mountain for, I don't even know how many miles. And then next thing you know, it, we dropped down. Oh, and it was steep too. I don't even know how many feet footage we dropped, you know, a thousand foot. I have no idea, but you know, by the time we get down to the bottom, we're looking up and we're like, Oh, we got to climb out. And you know, rough calculation. I remember you saying it's like a 45 degree slope. Yeah. And, and it was on on axis set oh, 575 you know, yards. And so we go and the next thing you know, it's like, Oh, 300 and the next thing oh 100 and the next thing you know it's it's still like 100 more 100 more so i was just beat after that and it was starting to rain on us oh that was ridiculous too i'm so glad it didn't just dump dump, on us while we were yeah it was a drizzle climbing out of that thing but yeah so that's what i mean i just want to make i'm i want to be a smart hunter i don't want to be dumb um usually most people say you know shoot now ask questions later um i'm kind of like that but i want to know you know, what's the later portion too, because I don't, well, I don't want to be that person who's in quote, 10 miles back by themselves. Cause you do have multiple trips to get that elk out. And so I'm not yeah, that I type don't care of how hunter. tough you are. You're yeah. You're yeah. only going to carry. And I've heard of people carrying out, you know, two quarters at a time, which I want to see it, yeah. but I've heard of people doing it and cool, but I wonder for how long. Right. Oh, I know. I know a guy who he shot a spike last year. Now, granted, it was a spike, but still, he carried out the whole elk by himself. Oh. Yeah, and not for me, you know. But he's a big, big guy. But yeah, not for me. You know, That's I a like a testament to, to his pack. Right. And yeah, he's running an EXO pack, and uh, it held it. Um, you know, he's just a brute, brute house. You know, he can he can pack some weight. But for me, I'm the type of person I'd rather be comfortable carrying weight. And if I want to do it multiple trips, then I'll do that because as long as I'm within that certain mileage, mileage from camp or the truck, you know, I don't want to be shoot something, you know, eight miles back and have to make multiple trips. No, but if I got a camp that's five miles back and I shoot something that three, then I just shuttle it back to camp. Yeah. And, you know, so I work it that way. I don't want to do 150 pounds, you know, for that whole eight miles. That's just, you know, I'm not here to break down my body. I want to be a smart hunter. Um, yeah. Well, and a lot of that too is, um, uh, is weather and, you know, all kinds of stuff like that. You know, you don't want to be too far back in there. And then, it, well, and a lot of new hunters, they don't realize how big an elk actually is right? and yeah. how much weight it is that you're bringing out. If you bring it out with the bone, I mean, you're, you're looking at, you're looking at four trips. Yep. Uh, unless you're just really wanting to either a hurt yourself or you're a beast. Yeah. That last elk that I shot, it was 318 pounds of boned out meat. And that took me for you know, five trips because of the, you know, the head in the cave and granted I could have probably done it in four, but I'm not here to break my body down. You know, like I said, I, I, I'm right around that hundred pound, you know, limit, you know, every trip. Cause that way I'm not going to break my legs down. I'm not going to break my knees, you know, versus, you know, let's say 130, 40 pounds. Well, in the country that yeah. you're hunting in too is like, right. I mean, yeah, where even, we were, even if it's not 45 degrees. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's still, even walking up a, a 10 degree slope sucks when you've right. got that much weight on or your Or imagine back. going downhill. Oh Yeah. Like yeah. that's why when we got at that one elk, I'm like, man, it's kind of bittersweet. We didn't shoot this guy because we had a side <laughs> hill across avalanche shoots and everything. So, but yeah, I just, I, I want to be a smart hunter. And if you are carrying, you know, our gear, it's going to help you be that much lighter. Cause when I first started, I was 62 pounds for a week in my pack and now getting lighter weight stuff. I'm about 32 pounds. Well, and lighter weight stuff that's not going to fail because that's yeah. the other thing too. You know, you got these ultralight backpackers and stuff, and they're like, "Oh yeah, I got to go with the lightest gear." But it, it, you know, the lighter you go, the harder it is to make that material last. Right. And 
you know, that's one of the things I like about your stuff is it's, it's durable. Right. Yeah. There's uh, other companies out there. So what we use is we use like that shelter we were using is a 20 denier. Um, and then we've got a 70 denier. There's another company out there that use a 10 denier. So it's like tissue paper. And so like your concept about durability, it makes you wonder, you know, because I've, I've sewn up a, sh- a shelter before with a 20 denier and I've got a sewing chair that's got wheels on it and I just wasn't paying attention. I was just going and next thing you know what, I look back and I rolled over the point of the sh- part of the shelter there and just rolling over I, with that chair, you know, wore a hole in that fabric, you know, so even a 20 denier is pretty light, but I couldn't imagine making one out of 10 denier. And it's yeah. like I said, it's, it's almost like tissue paper. So. Yeah. And that doesn't mean that, you know, if you take care of your stuff too, that obviously is going to help. Right. Right. You know, you're not going to, you're not going to be rolling over your tent. Oh, absolutely not. And the people always ask me that, well, which one would you go with? Well, our, our cost on the lighter weight one, it's, it's a 1.1 ounce per square yard. So it's a lighter weight fabric. And it's a sil poly. It's not much more. It's, a, you know, shelter to shelter. It's about 70 to a hundred bucks more, depending on what shelter you go with. Um, I always tell people, it's what's up to you. You know, do you want a lighter weight shelter or do you want one that's a little bit more durable? And when I mean a little bit more durable, that's where we're talking the denier. And if you go and set the shelter up in the thick woods and you're going to be up against a tree with that branch rubbing on all night, you're going to want the thicker denier one. But who sets a shelter up next to trees where it rubs on it all night? Yeah. You know, so that's why I tell people is like if your main purpose is to be lightweight or if you don't, if you got meals, horses, goats, or whatever, then get the heavier one. You can save some bucks. Well, but yeah. If you've got something that's going to carry it in, who cares how much Exactly. It yeah. Yeah. I asked one guy and he had goats. He's like, I don't care. I bring in a, an 18 pack with me and cheeseburgers. <laughs> you know, so he got the heavier I one. I need to get goats. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I personally, I run the lightweight stuff on all my stuff because I want to be lighter carrying in. And most of the time I've got a camp on my back. Um, unless you find like a base camp. And then I, you know, I do a gear drop and then I'm carrying on just my pack and my kill kit with me. Yeah. So what other, what other sorts of gear do you guys manufacture? Um, we do little things. Um, and I kind of keeps playing in my head if I should still make them or not. Um, for example, it's like, you know, we do like wallets, you know, we do water bottle holders, you know, we have, we don't manufacture titanium stoves. We partnered with light outdoors. You know, so we only sell them if people buy a shelter from us. Um, I believe that's the best shelter. I mean, if everybody looks at it, look at Light Outdoors. Um, their faceplate is almost the same size as the door. So you can get large chunks of wood in there. So, you know, we, we have that. But like I said, only with other shelters that we sell. We do tarps. Um, we've already talked about quilts. We've already talked about game bags. We already talked about the pullouts. Um, I do a dry bag. Um and then, you know, people have the seam seal on themselves because we don't have the machine for it. Um, oh, and that's something that came up the other, what was it, last night? Yep. Yeah, a guy had uh, got a hold of you while we were at camp and was yeah. like, hey, my tent leaks. <laughs> yep. Yeah, he said a brand new, he just bought it, brand new shelter is leaking. They had to call their hunt short. And that's why I said, I said, that, that fabric can't leak, you know, because it's so poly, so it's, goes through this ringer and it's injected with silicone. And I said, there's only two things that could have happened. You didn't seam seal it and you didn't seam seal it. Yeah. And, and then the gentleman called me and uh, I told him, you know, he wanted to send it back. And so just as everybody knows too, we're in Bozeman, Montana. And when we got up this morning, it was 38 degrees. I think my wife said it was 38 degrees yesterday, you know, not at night. Yeah. So we get snow, you know, almost eight, nine months out of the year. So I don't have the ability to seam seal these things. And any competitor you look up, you know, I'm not going to mention them, but 99% of them don't seam seal them. Yeah. Cause that, I that, think I've heard of one that does, but if uh, you get like a North face or a marmot, like a, a true tent, those come seam sealed, you know, yeah. they're, they're manufactured overseas, but anything that's made in the States, they're probably not going to be seam sealed. Yeah. You know, a, a true shelter. You know, like a floorless design. And it's got to be, you know, really warm conditions to be able to yeah. seam seal it. So. Yeah, and it's super easy. And I, I told the gentleman, too, I just said, go to, you know, REI or Sportsman's and find, it's SealNet. You know, it's essentially a seam sealer. 
set it up. You just paint the seams and let it dry. And then you come back with like a baby powder, talcum powder, and then you just pat the seams because it's like a silicone. So it kind of sticks and you put that powder on it and it doesn't stick anymore. And that's it, you know, rather than sending it back to me to do it when I don't have the means to do it. I mean, if it's in the middle of summertime, sure, I can do it. But uh, all of our stuff doesn't come seam sealed. But yeah, so once he got that done, he's, you know, he's, he's supposed to be doing it now. And then they'll be back hunting again. No problems. So yeah, you just got to make sure you seam seal them. Yeah. So what do you got in the future? Um, I got, I got this shelter that we're coming out with, um, trying to make, and that's what we got to get a lot of riff from is trying to be an innovative product or something new. And it's really hard to find, uh, like new inventions are, are really, they're rare. Yeah. And especially when we're talking shelters here, like a lot of ours for, for like, for example, a four corners, it's just like an A-frame design and how long has an A-frame design been around? The only thing that we did on that A-frame is we made on that four corners, for example, is the removable doors on the front and the rear. And it's so simple to set up. It's six feet wide, four feet tall, eight feet long. And there's markers on the side that are every two foot. So, I mean, I won't go into it, but it's, you know, you just take your, your markers on the side. It figures out your width and you already got your length and you're set up in two minutes. Yeah. Um, so that's just simplicity factor behind it and the option to have removable doors, that whole shelter by itself, three seasons is one pound. You add the doors with a stove jack, you're at one pound, 10 ounces. So I saw that you had used uh, a ground cloth yep. that you had made. Is that something that you sell? Uh, I don't, I don't sell that one. So what we do is we do multi-cloth. A multi-cloth is a DWR fabric. And it's uh, 48 by 60. Uh, and then we also have a 48 by 72. And so people use that as, like, hence the name, is a multi-cloth. If you're glassing, you can use that to give you some sunshade. Um, or if it's raining, you get out of the rain. Or what I tell people is you can use it as a ground cloth. Because I know, you know, I talked about it. Is You want to have every item to be able to do multiple things. Mm -hmm. That's how you save weight. So if you're going to be carrying a ground cloth for you to sleep on, and you're going to carry a bag, you know, a tarp for you to lay your meat on, you got two items doing the same thing. Yep. So that's why we have that multi-cloth. And um, I don't use that multi-cloth or, you know, a multi-cloth for my ground cloth just because I'm 6'3", and that Thermarest X-Therm, you know, I think it's 250 bucks or something like that. So what I did is I made mine three feet wide by six and a half feet long, you know, just so it's big enough for me to roll around on. I just don't want to puncture that pad. Oh, yeah. And so in my kill kit, I carry the multi-cloth. But for me, it just, I want that extra. You know, I'll carry the extra. I think it, that, that ground cloth that I was sleeping on was three ounces. You yeah. know, I'll, I'll, I'll carry that extra three ounces. And I wonder, actually, because I've never actually waited out that piece of uh, Tyvek yep. that I was using yep. for, for my ground cloth. I wonder how much it actually weighs. Right. compared to that but yeah. I, I would assume it's got to weigh more because you know yeah, when I, I was think yours is a little bit bigger than mine too but yeah yeah but that's that's um one thing that we do uh is that multi-cloth um we do uh like those quilts that i'm not gonna like i said i don't have any much for new products except for that one shelter um last year we came out with a reed reed holster or reed stash that uh you can put in your pack or your chest harness and you can put your recalls or external calls yeah. in individual slots so they breathe so you know which one you're grabbing because you can see all of them yeah um so we came out with that that's pretty cool uh i i was <laughs> well we were trying to figure it out last night your your little um insulator thing i was <laughs> that you made for yourself but oh yeah man if i can find out another use for that thing <laughs> yeah so just as uh you know so everybody knows it's what he's talking about is uh, so whenever you make your own meals, uh, whether it be a mountain house or your own dehydrated meals, is you always want to keep them insulated or warm so it rehydrates your meal wells. Uh, so a lot of people roll them in their sleeping bag or, you know, their quilt. Uh, we've got something that's essentially, if you can picture, like a kid's lunchbox, you know, when we were in school. Yeah, an old-time lunchbox. You know, yeah. it's kind of triangular shape yep. a little bit, stands up triangular yeah. shape. Yeah, so we just use the climate shield, leftover climate shield that we have from quilts, 
and we make our meals and I just stuff them in there and it's like stuffing it in your quilt. So yeah, we were kicking around the idea of what else you can use it for, for multi purpose. Um, but yeah, I just made one myself for, you know, for my food and, you know, coming in the near future, it, it's probably going to be an item that we decide to, to sell and make, you know, just because it has a purpose because who else makes something like that? Now yeah. I understand people can throw it in their, in their quilt, but it gives somebody an option who doesn't want to do that. Yeah. Well, I mean, some people like to spill their mountain house meals and stuff hey, like we don't that. Like, and... We don't like to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 That was, that was pretty upsetting. Yeah, that's if you've ever knocked over your meal in after the, a long yeah. backpacking trip in in the shelter too. Yeah, and it was on that pad that we just got to talking about too that I was laying on. Yeah, so we had to, <laughs> we had to scrape out the shelter just so I don't roll around in chili mac. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, you definitely do not want to uh, spill your meal inside your quilt. Right, that's so, for sure. That's that. So what uh, what other hunts you got going on? Um, so we, when I was meeting up, uh, when I met up with you, I was going to go to the Bob Marshall, um, but the gentleman I'm going with is coming up from Texas and his truck overheated like last Wednesday or week, Wednesday before two weeks ago, something like that. And he was supposed to be leaving on that Friday and just, he's had countless issues. Oh, and yeah. I just heard yeah. that his truck is finally fixed and he's on his way up. So as of now, I'm going to go to the Bob um, and that's, that's just north of Missoula for people who don't know the Bob Marshall. Um, and that's a rifle hunt. It opens up September 15th and it's one of like two places you can hunt elk in the rut with a rifle and it's a general tag too. So we're doing that. Um, and then I got a buddy coming out, so he's going to go along with that. Well, and, and that's probably because it's ridiculous to get back in there. Absolutely. So. You got to have horses because you got to get into the wilderness portion and it's, the ride we're going on is about 20 miles in, and I think the boundary is about 15, 17 miles. So I got that, and then every year um, I've got uncles that live in Montana here. One of them that's in Washington, we're going to go you know, hammer down some does, and we've obviously got our buck tag. And if I still, well, if we have them left after you know, some of the hunts, but I've always hunt with them because I prize family time, I prize memories. You know, shooting the biggest animal isn't what it's about to me. It's making memories. Yeah. So oh, you definitely make memories. So I don't have any out-of-state hunts um, planned up this year. I know next year I've got, so back in 14, I went to Europe. And then I, and a month later, I went to Alaska. Oh, and, where'd you go in Europe? To hunt? Uh, I didn't hunt in Europe. Oh, um, oh okay. I went to Scotland, then Paris, London, Germany. Ah, gotcha. So we just did a, a tour of stuff over there. And my wife wants to go back to Scotland. And I said, well, you know, last time we went to Scotland, I went to Alaska, you know. She's like, yeah. I said, well, so what should I hunt this time? <laughs> you know, so uh, I'm, I'm talking with one of my best friends, and um, we're going to go on a, a caribou hunt. Probably a caribou hunt. Um, the Dalton Highway or the Hall Road is what people call it. Yeah, you that's can, an over-the-counter hunt too, isn't yep, it? Yep, yeah, you just go buy your tag and go hunt. I mean, we did it on a cheap. I shot two caribou, and it was a drop hunt. Um, I want to say it was five grand you know, with my mounts, um, with getting all of our gear back. But what I'm going to do now is do that haul road and we're just going to rent a car with four guys and, you know, have some tents and just camp along the road. And that haul road is the pipeline goes from Prudhoe Bay all the way down to Valdez down there. And, um, you just hunt off that haul road and you got five miles on each side of the road because of that pipeline. You can't use rifle. So there's a ton of caribou that go through there and caribou hunting, if you haven't done it, is tough. You know, because they've got super gnarly feet that can walk on that tundra. And if you're an elk hunter, you always have that mentality, oh, I'm going to go get these animals. Yeah, that doesn't happen. So you got to find where they're crossing, and you kind of, like, ambush them. Well, and they're extremely, um, like, they move around so much. Yeah, they don't stop so moving. You know, If you ever watch a video of them, they're, like, trying to eat and walk at the same time. But you can, their, their hoofs, they, they click while they walk. Um, but yeah, that's what we're, that's the next hunt that I'm going to do probably is that one or probably a moose hunt too up in Alaska. Um, cause you just go buy those tags too. Now granted you're in non-resident areas, but so that's all, that's all I got. Well, next year I'll probably be doing a, a bear hunt down in Idaho and a deer hunt with some buddies down there. Yeah. I've, I've got, a, I'm planning on doing a, uh, spring bear hunt in Idaho and, um, 
got a hunt in Wyoming coming up next month and uh, just be hunting here probably yep. most of the time. I'm going to try and go to New Mexico again. I was going to do spring bear this year, but then I didn't have time for a deer hunt this year just because, you know, like what we're doing now and what I've got going on in the bob and, you know, granted the, the bob plans have changed on me. You know, it's like we kind of burned a week when I was supposed to be in the wilderness. But um, I, I told my buddies, I said, I, I'd rather do it so I can buy a license once and use, you know, both tags mm-hmm. rather than buy a license for bear this year and buy a license again next year. You know, that's just the fr- frugal part of me. Yeah. So I said, well, why don't I just do it next year, plan it out so I can hunt spring bear and then come back and we'll do a mealy hunt or something. Yeah. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, but yeah, yep, just, so. just trying to keep it low key and enjoy it. Well, Tristan, I really appreciate it, man. It was great hunting with you, and uh, hopefully we can do it again. Uh, where can people find you? Uh, we can go check us out at viamoutdoors.com. Uh, we're and it stands for 6 a.m. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, we're on Facebook. We're on Instagram. Um, if you call my number, you're going to talk to the owner. And that's what a lot of people str- you know, tell me is, oh, man, I never knew you, you know, you're the owner. I'm like, yeah, I'm a one-man shop. Yeah, my wife helps me cut the stuff up, up and stuff like that. But for the most part, I'm the, even the receptionist, you know. So yeah. it's it's you get that personable experience, you know, that you don't get with a lot of larger companies. Yeah. Um, but the one thing that I strive for is number one is customer service, and I get in trouble with people sometimes. You know, they're like, "Man, I call and talk to you for products, and mm-hmm. you don't want to sell them to me. You just want to make sure I'm on a good hunt." Like, yeah, man, I'm just, I want to make sure you're successful. and <laughs> You're not the pushy salesman. Absolutely, yeah. I, I mean, if you buy from me, great. If you don't, so be it. I'd rather have you, you know, holding a nice rack and know that you had fun in the woods. And if you got our products in our hand, in your hands, great. And if not, you know, good for you. You, you, you know, you were success, successful. So. Yeah. Where are you going to, you said you are going to go to an expo. Yeah, so every year we do the Western Hunt Expo. Um, that's in Salt Lake. I always kick around other expos, but, you know, for as small as we are, I've got a different full-time job, wife, kids, um, but I always make time for the Hunt Expo. Um, it's such an eye-opener for the people in the outdoor industry, or even if you're a consumer. It's one of the largest consumer shows in the West, and uh, so that's in February, it's right around Valentine's Day. So we go down there, it's a four-day show. Uh, we'll be down there this year with, a, with our own booth again, so if you're listening, come on, check us out. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, if you want to see some of the products in person and, yep. and stuff like that. Yep, definitely. and we'll have, a, we'll have a bunch there. So we're rack, uh, starting to stack up some inventory in, you know, in this time, and I'm going to have a bunch of inventory down there. And like I said, it's a consumer show, so people go down there to buy stuff. Um, anywhere from fishing trips, hunting trips, guns, you, know, you name it, they got it for sale down there. Yeah, awesome, man. Well, I really appreciate it, and uh, good luck on your hunt. Great, great. Thank you.